I never intended to become Silicon Valley's most talked about quantum computing researcher. But standing in Novateca's gleaming conference room, watching Dr. Marcus Thorne publicly ridicule three years of my work, I realized that sometimes the best innovations come from being underestimated. My name is Dr. Anna Liu, and until yesterday, I was just the quiet Asian girl running what everyone thought was a failed quantum computing project at Novatech Industries. At least that's what they believed. What they didn't know was that every mockery, every dismissal had been carefully orchestrated by me. I still remember my first day at Novatech, fresh from completing my PhD at MIT. Marcus had hired me with reluctance, making it clear that I was only there to fulfill diversity quotas. We'll start you on something simple, he'd said, barely glancing at my dissertation on quantum coherence. Women often struggle with the more complex aspects of quantum physics. What Marcus didn't know, what none of them knew, was that I'd already made a breakthrough in quantum computing during my doctoral research. A way to maintain quantum coherence at room temperature, solving one of the field's biggest challenges. But I'd seen too many brilliant researchers have their work stolen by corporate supervisors to make that mistake. So I played a role. The quiet, hard-working researcher who didn't mind being overlooked. I accepted the tiny lab in the basement, the outdated equipment, the condescending comments during meetings. Meanwhile, I was building something revolutionary. Your quarterly reports are disappointing, Anna, Marcus would say during reviews. Perhaps quantum physics is too theoretical for you. Have you considered a more practical role? I would duck my head, apologize softly, promise to work harder. All while my private lab, the one I'd built in my garage with my own money, was producing results that would revolutionize the industry. The real turning point came six months ago when Marcus assigned his nephew, Brad, to supervise my project. Brad, whose greatest achievement was being born into the right family, spent his days playing mobile games and taking credit for any small progress I reported. Women in science, he'd say, lounging in my lab, need strong male guidance. Your lucky Uncle Marcus is so patient with you. I recorded every conversation, documented every interaction. Not for revenge. I'm not that petty. But because I knew exactly how this would end. Silicon Valley's old boys club was predictable that way. Three months ago, Google announced a $500 million contract for quantum computing research. Suddenly, my little basement lab was important. Marcus started showing up unannounced, asking detailed questions about my methodology. We need to accelerate this research, he announced one day. I'm bringing in some senior researchers to take over. You'll assist them, of course. I nodded meekly, watching him search my lab for anything valuable. But my real work had never been there. Every important breakthrough was safely documented and patented under my own name, through a separate company I'd established. Quantum Future Technologies. Which brings us to yesterday's company meeting. Marcus had gathered everyone to announce a new direction for the quantum computing division. I sat quietly in the back, laptop open, watching the drama unfold. After reviewing the quantum computing project, Marcus began, his voice carrying that familiar condescending tone, we've determined that the current research direction is ineffective. Despite three years of funding, Dr. Liu's work has produced no significant results. The room filled with knowing looks. Of course the quiet Asian girl couldn't handle complex research. Of course she'd failed. We'll be shutting down her project, Marcus continued and redirecting resources to a new team of experienced researchers. Anna will return to basic lab work, where she can focus on more, achievable goals. Brad smirked from his seat near the front. Back to the lab if you can handle real work. Laughter rippled through the room. I kept my face carefully neutral, fingers moving across my laptop keyboard, sending emails I'd prepared months ago. Do you have anything to say, Anna? Marcus asked, clearly expecting tears or protests. I closed my laptop slowly, smiled politely and said, Of course. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll clean out my lab tomorrow morning. Marcus looked slightly disappointed by my calm acceptance. He'd been hoping for a scene, something to further justify my removal. Instead I gathered my things and walked out quietly, leaving behind a room full of people who thought they'd just witnessed my humiliation. In my car I checked my phone. The emails had gone out perfectly. One to the patent office, confirming my ownership of 17 key quantum computing patents. One to my lawyers, initiating proceedings to protect my intellectual property. 
and one to Google's Quantum Research Division, accepting their invitation to discuss my room temperature quantum coherence breakthrough. What Marcus didn't know, what none of them knew, was that my failed research at Novatech had been a carefully constructed cover. Every dead end I reported, every failed experiment was designed to hide my real progress. While they were laughing at my apparent incompetence I was building something revolutionary. My phone buzzed with a message from Dr. Sarah Chin at Google. Patents confirmed. Meeting still on for tomorrow? Absolutely, I replied. Looking forward to it. Another message popped up, this one from Marcus. Anna, let's discuss your role tomorrow before you clear out your lab. I think we can find a suitable position for you. I smiled, thinking about the stack of documents waiting in my home office. Proof of every dismissive comment, every instance of discrimination, every attempt to steal credit for others' work. But more importantly, proof that the patents Novatech thought they owned were actually mine. Looking up at the stars, I thought about something my mother used to say, success isn't about being the loudest in the room. It's about being the smartest when it matters. Tomorrow would show them exactly how smart I'd been. But for now, I had a quiet evening ahead of me, a presentation to polish for Google and the satisfaction of knowing that sometimes the best revenge is simply being brilliant enough to plan ahead. The real story would begin with tomorrow's resignation letter. The next morning, I arrived at Novatech precisely at 8 a.m., dressed in a sharp black suit instead of my usual lab coat. Marcus was already waiting in my basement lab, trying to look concerned rather than predatory. Anna, about yesterday, he began leaning against my desk. I may have been too harsh. Your work has potential with proper guidance. Actually, I interrupted softly, I have something for you. I handed him an envelope. My resignation letter. He barely glanced at it. Don't be hasty. We can discuss a different role, maybe as a research assistant to the new team. You should read it, I suggested logging into my computer one last time, particularly the part about intellectual property rights. As Marcus read, his face went through a fascinating series of color changes. This is impossible, he sputtered. All research conducted at Novatech belongs to the company. Actually, I pulled up a series of documents on my screen. My contract had a very specific clause about independent research. Everything I developed using my own resources on my own time belongs to me. Your legal team approved it three years ago. They probably should have read it more carefully. The door opened and Brad sauntered in. Uncle Marcus, the Google representatives are here early. They want to. He stopped, noticing the tension in the room. Perfect timing, I said, gathering my things. They're here to meet with me. Marcus's face darkened. What are you talking about? The quantum coherence breakthrough they're interested in? It's mine. All 17 patents, registered through my company Quantum Future Technologies. I projected my patent documentation onto the lab's main screen. This lab was just a cover, somewhere to work on minor projects while I completed my real research at home. Brad lunged for my laptop. You can't. I already did. I stepped back calmly. Every file on that computer is public domain research. My real work was never here. But feel free to check. Marcus was still reading my resignation letter, his hands shaking. Room temperature quantum coherence. Achieved two years ago. Independent testing confirmed. You've been lying to us. No, I corrected him. I simply didn't share research that wasn't part of my Novatech responsibilities. Research you repeatedly dismissed as worthless. The lab door opened again. Dr. Emily Wallace, Novatech's lead counsel, rushed in waving papers. Marcus, we have a problem. The Google contract. Anna's patents are essential to the technology they want. We can't fulfill the requirements without them. Then we'll challenge the patents, Marcus snapped. She developed them while working here. Emily shook her head. No, she didn't. I've reviewed everything. Her contract explicitly protected her independent research rights. She documented all her outside work meticulously. The patents are ironclad. But the quantum computing division is worthless without her breakthrough. Emily turned to me. You planned this all along, didn't you? I smiled. I learned early that the best way to protect your work is to make sure nobody thinks it's worth stealing. The next hour was chaos. The Google representatives were politely puzzled about why they were meeting with Marcus when their contract negotiations were with Quantum Future Technologies. 
Novatech's board called an emergency meeting. Brad had a meltdown in the hallway screaming about family loyalty and betrayal. I calmly packed my personal items including the small quantum probability calculator I'd built. The only piece of my real work that had ever been in this lab. As I worked my phone buzzed with messages from journalists. Someone had leaked the patent documents. You'll never work in this industry again, Marcus threatened as security arrived to escort him out of my lab. Apparently, the board had some concerns about his management style. Actually, I replied, I already have a new job. CEO of my own company with Google as our first major client. But thank you for teaching me so much about how not to run a research division. By noon the story had broken. Unknown researcher revolutionary quantum computing breakthrough, read the headlines. Novatech's stock was plummeting as investors realized they'd lost the Google contract. My inbox was flooded with interview requests and partnership offers. Dr. Sarah Chin from Google met me in the lobby. That was quite a show, she said as we walked to her car. Ready to discuss the real work now? Absolutely. I glanced back at Novatech's gleaming building. I think I'm done playing small. The next few months were intense. Quantum future technologies grew rapidly, attracting top researchers who actually cared about the science rather than corporate politics. We established a quantum computing research center that emphasized collaboration and innovation over hierarchy and ego. One year later, I stood on stage at the International Quantum Computing Conference, accepting the Innovation Award. Looking out at the audience, I saw many familiar faces from Novatech including Brad who'd tried to join my company six times. Marcus had resigned in disgrace after an internal investigation revealed a pattern of discrimination and intellectual property theft attempts. Novatech underwent a major restructuring with Dr. Emily Wallace taking over as CEO. She since implemented strict policies against workplace discrimination and harassment. The quantum probability calculator from my old lab sits in our company museum, alongside documentation of my failed Novatech research. It reminds our team that sometimes the greatest innovations come from being underestimated. These days, when I mentor young scientists, especially women and minorities in STEM, I tell them my story. Not to encourage deception, but to teach them about protecting their work and believing in their own brilliance. The old boys club of Silicon Valley still exists, but they watch their step around me now. My reputation isn't just about the breakthrough. It's about how I outsmarted years of systematic discrimination to protect my work. My mother's old advice about success and being smart when it matters hangs in my office, next to our first quantum computer prototype. It reminds me that revolution doesn't always come from confrontation. Sometimes it comes from being patient enough to set up the perfect checkmate. Quantum Future Technologies is now at the forefront of quantum computing research. Our room-temperature quantum computers are revolutionizing everything from drug discovery to climate modeling. More importantly, we've created a research environment where brilliance is recognized regardless of gender, race, or background. Brad occasionally sends me job applications, each one more desperate than the last. I forward them to HR with a note about his past behavior. Sometimes the best revenge is simply letting people live with the consequences of their actions. Marcus, Last I heard he was, consulting for small tech companies, telling anyone who would listen that he had actually discovered my breakthrough first. Nobody believes him, of course. The documentation is too thorough, the timeline too clear. The basement lab at Novatech has been converted into a collaborative workspace. Dr. Wallace sent me a photo. They kept my old desk as a reminder that appearances can be deceiving. Sometimes late at night, working in my state-of-the-art lab with its quantum mainframes humming quietly, I think about those three years in the basement. Every condescending comment, every dismissal, every attempt to steal my work, they all made my eventual victory that much sweeter. But the real victory isn't in the patents or the billions in contracts. It's in the faces of young scientists who come to our lab and see someone like them in charge. It's in the research we're doing that could change the world. Because sometimes the best revenge isn't about proving people wrong. It's about proving yourself right in ways they never imagined possible. And that's worth more than all the corporate titles in Silicon Valley.